First Peter chapter 3, verse 18, it says this, For Christ also died for sins once for all, the just for the unjust, in order that he might bring to God, bring us to God, excuse me, having been put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made proclamation to the spirits now in prison, who once were disobedient when the patience of God kept waiting in the days of Noah, during the construction of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were brought safely through the water. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Luke chapter 17, verse 26. We got some more reading to do. Remember, reading is fundamental. Readers are leaders. Amen. It says this, I love you, Jesus. And just as it happened in the days of Noah, so it shall also be in the days of the Son of Man. They were eating, they were drinking, they were marrying, they were being given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. <laughs> let's go, let's go. Let's jump to Genesis chapter 6, verse 5 through 8. Let's do it to it. First book of the Bible. We got a few verses to read, but it'll be good. And then we'll get going. Genesis chapter 6, verse 5 through 8. Help me, Jesus. It says this. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great on the earth and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry. Oh, gosh. That he made man on the earth. and He was grieved in his heart. And the Lord said, I will blot out man whom I have created from the face of the land, from man to animals, to creeping things, and to birds of the sky, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the Lord. <laughs> Let's go one more time. Let's jump back to the New Testament. I probably should have read this first, but oh well. Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 7. Most of us digital saints anyways, you just got to tap buttons. How many paper Bible saints out there? Glory to God. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7, it says this. By faith, Noah, being warned by God about things not yet seen, in reverence, prepared an ark for the salvation of his household, by which he condemned the world and became an heir, glory to God, of the righteousness which is according to faith. All right, Lord, help me out, Holy Ghost. We love you in Jesus' mighty name. All right, we're talking about today, as in the days of Noah. I want you to type that in the comments if you're able to, as in the days of Noah. That's the name of today's message, and we're going to do it to it in Jesus' name, as in the days of Noah. Hallelujah. Whew. First of all, one of the things that we have to think about when it comes to the days of Noah well, first of all, Jesus gives us a very clear prophetic picture of the last days of the end time. You said, oh, my God, I came to the service where you're talking about the world ending. <laughs> Somebody got to tell you. <laughs> but just stay with me for a little bit here. Jesus gives a very clear understanding and a clear picture of what we can expect to happen in the end times. He says it so clearly in Luke chapter 17. He says it basically like this, just as it happened in the days of Noah. It's going to be like this in the days of the Son of Man. It's interesting that Jesus says the days of Noah as in the days of the Son of Man. We know that according to Scripture, the rapture is not days. The rapture is in a moment. According to scripture, it's in the twinkling of an eye, right? So it's not something that is prolonged. It's a moment that the church as believers are waiting for. So I, oh, bless the Lord. So when Jesus is talking about as in the days of Noah, he's not talking about, I'm just going to do my best to stand still so it doesn't look weird. He's not talking about the need or the desire to um, escape a certain cataclysmic experience. Because remember, as in the days of Noah, the days of Noah that he's talking about is the era, the time, the dispensation of Noah. The Noah's time, when Noah was alive, when Noah was commissioned by God, it was a specific commissioning. It was 
a commissioning that was geared and generated for something very specific. It was a time period where Noah got his call from God, got the vision from God for the ark, got the scrolls of what he was to preach, or the mission or the download of what he was supposed to preach, and then he began to build the ark for a period of 120 years. And so this is very interesting, is that this is uh, at least 120 year period of time, as referred to as the days of Noah. Before that, Noah was 600 and something plus years. So it, it, it could be referring to when he was a mature person, when he came of age, or when he stepped into his role, on his prophetic role in the earth. So it's a lot of ways we can look at that and break it down. But I don't want to bore you in the details. Um, but, but I want to say this, though, that Jesus is making a comparison to the dispensation of time. Now, yes, we know the end is coming. Yes, we know that there is going to be a great gathering, a great catching up of the church. We know that God is going to do something. We know, we know, we know that one day that like he's coming like a thief in the night and we know that we got to have our stuff ready. Let me just start right there and make this parenthetical pause to tell you this is that no matter what you do in life, you need to get your stuff together, get your life together. Matter of fact, get your life. I want you to put that in the comments. Get your life. Get your life. No matter what it takes, get right with God. I heard a songwriter say, you better stop playing with God. Come out of your mess. Glory to God, because you better believe that he's coming real soon. And so I'm telling you this because, yes, we do have an expiration date. Hallelujah. For the patience of God. Although the Bible says God is patient so that none should perish. But yet there is a date. There is a moment. And God, Jesus said that only God knows when this moment will occur, when he will say, all right, that's it. That's enough time. I have gave these people plenty of time and opportunity to get right. And then now has to come the judgment time, the moment where I begin to initiate the absolute end. Hallelujah. But listen to me very closely, church, that we are in a time where you must be aware of your standing. Glory to God. The Bible says, examine yourself to see whether you be in the faith or not. And we got a lot of Christians out here in 2023 who are doing all kind of stuff, who are saying all kind of things, who are believing all kind of things, and you are not in the faith. I feel like Maury and I need a, a, a yellow envelope. Oh my God. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking at my envelope. And when it comes to the salvation of, uh-oh, sister so-and-so, test results show that you are not in the faith. And I could just see us running around. Can you imagine on the great day of judgment, you're running around like, oh my God, I love, oh, I'm so embarrassed. Like the baby's not yours. I mean, come on. Some of my more people got to know what I'm referring to. Come on. Don't play me. Don't play me. You know, that's a great illustration. <laughs> Come on. But the question is, you have to examine yourself whether you be in the faith or not. Glory to God, because you can do church and not be in the faith. You can do convocations. You can do all the singing, all the worshiping, all the praising. Jesus, matter of fact, said in those days, there are going to be many who come to me and say, Lord, Lord, did we not cast out devils in your name? Did we not do miracles in your name? Did we not heal the sick in your name? And Jesus is going to say, what is he going to say, church? He's going to grab that yellow envelope. My God. And he's going to look in it. Hallelujah. And he says, when it comes to the results of your life. He going to know he going to say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, because I never knew you. Glory to God. He says, I never knew you because you got to make sure you're in the faith. This is point number one that you really got to get. You have to make sure you are in the faith. You have to make sure you are in real covenant commitment with God through Jesus Christ, because if not, you will be lost. And we got to tell a dying world that Jesus is real and he's coming back and you need to get your life right, man. You got to stop playing around. Because he's coming real soon. And no man knows the day or the hour. So first, number one, get your life. That's number one today. It's first thing you got to know. But one of the things that we can also represent and understand that Jesus is making this prophetic parallel between the kingdom era and Noah's era is that we'll see such tremendous outbreak and expression advancing of wickedness. 
wickedness and evil. Jesus said, glory to God. I'm sorry. Noah said, I'm going to make that mistake a lot today. Noah, the Bible said about Noah was that the intents of man's heart were only evil continually. Only evil continually. And so we can compare and we can relate where we can look and say, man, I remember just three years ago, the world wasn't this crazy. Uh, I remember 10 years ago, the world wasn't this crazy where you don't know left from right and up from down. Amen. I remember a day where where, where y- your yeas would be yay and your names would be nay. Right. Your nose would be no. I remember a time. I remember a day. And I'm not even really that old. But my God, what kind of world are we living in? where men and women are trying to make laws and trying to do things where they can try to groom children for sexual purposes, where sex trafficking and kidnapping of human beings is on the rise. It's rampant. What kind of heart could be like so wicked and vile that they would take an innocent child and children of all ethnicities from all nationalities and, and, snatch them from their parents to put them in the for the means of sex work and slavery what kind of world are we in who like what kind of wickedness is that where somebody would drug and rape innocent people what kind of world we live in where we don't know the difference between male and female what kind of world do we live in where schools are more concerned about <laughs> having sex and teaching you how to choose your gender than they are with trying to teach you how to be upright and moral citizens. What kind of world we live in? Where people still do crazy stuff based on the color of your skin. What kind of world is this, man? Where we take money that to be used to help people and we use it to fund wars that kill people. What kind of world is this <laughs> where people will lie in your face and tell you the exact opposite <laughs> of uh, will tell you a lie and smile at you. Our politicians are lying to us. We don't know who to trust. Jesus tells us by the word of God that we ought to honor the king. That we ought to submit to authority, that authority is given by God. But man, they're lying to me. They want me to put poison in my body. They're legalizing all kind of crazy stuff that's going to kill me. What kind of world do we live in? And all I can say is as in the days of Noah. As in the days of Noah. And we can see that evil is rampant. Now, here is the challenge that we have in church. We can go old school church. And just condemn everything and say, you know what? Everything is wrong. Everything is going to hell. Everybody's going to hell in a handbasket. We can do that. As a matter of fact, you know, if you're not in Christ, if you're not in the faith, you definitely, you know, got a one way ticket to hell. Ain't no round trips. <laughs> you can ask Lazarus. Ain't no round trips. But what we have to recognize is that. The days of Noah are a bit more complex than people just being evil and wicked. The days of Noah have more to do with spiritual wickedness than it has to do actually with people being evil. And you say, wait a minute, Bryce, and I thought the word of God said that people were evil continually and God was sorry that he made them. And I would say you're absolutely right. But Apostle Paul gives us tremendous insight and revelation on the root of all this in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. He says this, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly places. So Apostle Paul is telling us, listen, yeah, people are wrong. People are bad. People are doing evil things. It's crazy what's happening in the world right now. But the truth is, it's not necessarily just because they were born that way. They've had inspiration. They've been under the influence. 
Matter of fact, Jesus told us this in the book of John when the, when the, the Pharisees and the, the scribes were coming to him and saying, listen, we have Abraham as our father, so we are already good. We are good. We don't, we don't, we don't need to you know, worry about trying to be right or, or we were born into rightness, correctness, into righteousness. And Jesus looked at him and he was like, listen, man, your dad is the devil. I don't know who told you what, but at the end of the day, unless you're born again, your father is the devil and you are of your devil, of your father, the devil. My God, because if you knew me, you would recognize truth and you would follow my ways. And so he says, you are of your father, the devil. And so the idea is, is that the devil is controlling and making these people do crazy stuff. I don't mean to give you an excuse card so that you can go do something crazy and you can say the devil made me do it. But at the end of the day, we have to recognize as David wrote that we were all born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Oh, stay with me church. I've got, God has got deliverance for you today. Please stay with me. Don't log off. So watch this. So you got to understand that the reason why wickedness prevails at such a level is because there are spiritual forces that are playing literally like the pulling the puppet strings over humanity. Yes, Lord, you better know this and you got to recognize this is that as in the days of Noah, in the days of Noah, there were times and situations where people would be under the regulation and under the rule of demonic influence. And what we are seeing is heightened demonic influence. Jesus is making a prophetic parallel. He says, as in the days of Noah, so will it be in the days of the son of man. I'm not trying to tell you glory to God that well, the church doesn't have hope, but I'm also telling you that there is a problem and the problem isn't the people. We're not against gay people. We're not against transgenders. We're not against liars. We're not against people who, 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 who steal. We're not against backbiters and gossipers in the sense of we hate you and want to kill you. We're against the spirit that's behind you. That's working in the sons of disobedience. We are into and we are against what the devil is doing and his system of demonic influence and control that is causing people to be evil continually in their heart. The Bible says you got to guard your heart because out of it flows the issues of life is that the mouth. I'm sorry. It's not what you eat that goes in your stomach that defiles you. But it's what comes out of your heart, what comes out of your mouth that defiles you. And the devil is the one that has his imps and has his demons and has his angels in a demonic covenant to bring you down and to make it so that you cannot function or operate as God would want you to. This is why Jesus says, I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. God does not want you, my God, to have an existence where you are bound and limited by these demonic forces and these demonic controls. God does not want you to have an existence where your body is rocking in pain and you are bound under the spirit of affliction and infirmity. God does not want it to have it where you are limited and bound and stuck under scarcity and lack in your life. God don't want it where you are depressed and your mental wellness is always is here and there is everywhere and you can't keep your mind together. Your mind is under unraveling and you feel so vulnerable. God doesn't want that, but you got to understand that there is a devil who hates you, who has got a covenant against you to destroy you, to bring you down and to murder you. Glory to God. But thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Who always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. You got to understand this today, church, that, oh, my God, that in, as in the days of Noah, God is saying that there is a demonic principality, a demonic system and a demonic structure that has been established that is designed to bring you down and to destroy any ounce of righteousness. <laughs> yeah, you know what? You know what gets me again? I have nothing against gay people. I have gay people in my family and all that. So I have nothing against them. I love everybody. You know what gets me about this movement? LGBTQIA. Again, this is not gay bashing. So don't take it as that. But why is it that they don't, you know, why is it that they put their energy on trying to get kids? You know, <laughs> I'm just like, why can't you get a grown man? You know, try to get a grown man. Put your energy there, but leave the kids alone. But you know why? It's because what the enemy wants to do is he wants to destroy righteousness.
And what he's going to do is he's going to do it every ounce to get it as soon as he can from the womb. I guarantee you this. If there was some kind of food or vitamin that they could make that could actually, if there's not already, that could actually convert a person's desires or mental state or pro, uh, or what's the word I'm looking for um, or their desire for. Uh, uh, from a sexual perspective, I guarantee you they would probably do that and they would hide it behind some sort of foolishness that they do <laughs> to get people to take stuff. I'm going to talk in code here. I don't want to disrespect nobody. They would do it because you know what, what the devil wants to do? He wants to destroy every ounce of righteousness. This is what you got to understand because when you talk about righteousness, you talk about covenant. I want you to say covenant. God is a God of covenant. Are we going to have church tonight, today, if you let me? God is a God of covenant. God is a God of covenant. God is a God of covenant. And what he wants to do is he wants you to walk in righteousness. And what righteousness means is, is really a, a, a code word for covenant. It is right relationship with God. Now, the only way to have right relationship with God is through covenant relationship with God. God is not a part-time lover. God is not somebody that you can just call me when you're lonely, when you need me. Um, what did he say? Um, I can't even think about it, but it's, he's not a, a, a um, 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 you know, what Drake said that, you you know, um, when you're lonely in the evening time, I forget what he said, but you know what I'm saying? God is not like that. God is saying, if you're going to, if you're going to be with me, you got to be with me for real, for real. And this is the thing where you got to get your yellow envelope and say, am I with God for real, for real? Or am I just playing Sunday morning church? Am I just playing the steps? Am I just doing it so that I can please somebody so that I can check it off my box and say, I went to church today. I had a good time today. But God is saying this, and, I'm, and we're going to take our time today. I'm not going to rush this thing. God is, God is saying that he is a God of covenant, and relationship with God is by covenant. Like everything that God does is by covenant. Notice that marriage is a covenant relationship. Marriage between a heterosexual man and a heterosexual woman, natural born man, natural born woman, is based on covenant. It's not based on convenience, is it? When you say you do, and you say for God to sickness or poor, rich or, or sickness or health, rich or poor, it's not just on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays before the sun go down. But it's I do every day for the rest of my life. And that's what it is with Christianity. And here's a challenge too. Let me give you this because a lot of people get it confused with Christianity. They feel that when it comes to Christianity, glory to God, that that it's a, a uh, uh, that it's you. If you make a mistake, you're done. But think about this. For those of us who've ever been married or married right now, you know this, that you make a lot of mistakes in marriage. My God, some days you forget to take the trash out and the wife is like, bruh, you got to do better. And some days she forget to, you know, make the sandwich the right way. And I'm like, sis, you got to do better. Glory to God. Amen. Sometimes you get on each other's nerves. Sometimes you say things you probably shouldn't say and you regret. But the marriage doesn't end because there are challenges in your interaction in it. It's till death do its part. It's forever. And it's the same way with God. So just because you make a mistake or just because you fall down, doesn't the scripture say that a righteous man falls seven times, but he gets up the eighth time, right? Because it's not the fact that you make mistakes. It's that I'm committed to this thing forever. Glory to God. Covenant doesn't mean I'm in, I'm going to be Oh, my God. Perfect in it. But I'm perfectly in it. <laughs> Glory to God. It, it, now, we should be perfect. The word of God says that we ought to be blameless, that the Holy Spirit has given us the means and the capacity where we don't have to sin. We sin and we fall short because we are not living up to the kingdom standard and possibility and potential that Jesus has given us. But nevertheless, what I'm saying is, is that you are not perfect in it per se, but you are perfectly in it, meaning that I'm secure, I'm safe in it. And no matter what happens, even if I fall, I'm getting back up again. Even if I mess up, I'm getting back up again. Even if I say something I shouldn't have said, I'm getting back up again. Even if I miss church, I'm getting back up again. Even if I accidentally cut somebody out on purpose, I'm getting back up again. Even if, even if I look at somebody with lust in my eyes and Jesus says, you've already committed adultery. I'm asking God to forgive me and I'm getting back up again because guess what? I might not be perfect in it, but I'm perfectly in it because the blood of Jesus has made it so that what can separate me from the love of God? I feel like having church in this place, which is in Christ Jesus. He says, neither life, life, nor death, nor things present, nor things that come, nor angels, nor demons, nor principalities, nor any other created thing can separate me from the love of God. Let's have church today. I'm perfectly in it. I need you to shout, I'm perfectly in it. I might not be perfect in it, but I'm perfectly in it. Thanks be to God. My God, I'm going to get back up. I'm going to repent and I'm going to start over. Oh, I know you got issues. I know you struggle sometimes. I know that you've not always lived the way you should, but listen to me. 
God is saying today that you better get up and wipe yourself off because you are still in it. God says, I still love you. I still care about you. I still know the plans that I have for you. Matter of fact, let me tell you, Jeremiah 29, 11 is not a prayer that is for perfect people. It's a prayer and it's a prophetic declaration that God has given over his people who are in captivity because of their disobedience. Oh, let's have church today. My God, God is saying, listen to me. Now, listen, we ought to walk upright. We ought to be holy. We ought to be blameless. Come on, come on. You better live right. This is that kind of church. We still believe in holiness. But Jeremiah 29 11, where God says, for behold, I know the plans for you. He's saying, I still got plans for you. Even you messed up, even though you violated my covenant, even though you've been like a whore, you've been like an adulterer towards me and our covenant. I still have plans for you. And I'm trying to tell somebody today under the sound of my voice. God still has plans for you. God still loves you. He says, because you might not be perfectly in it, but my God, you better say, God, I'm still in this thing. God, I still feel like going on. Things may not be going the way I want it to, but I still feel like pressing on. Oh, let's have church in here. And so (laughs) You got to understand, let's get back. I made some tangents, but let's get back. So we understand that in, 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 in the days of Noah, that there was a, a demonic influence because your problem is not you. You were not born this way. You were born shaping in sin. You were born in iniquity. As David says, you were born with the devil pulling strings on you. You were born with the devil having access to you. You know, it's almost as if like the, the, the gross grotesque picture of American slavery where where oftentimes where women and families would I won't even say families but when babies would be born because a lot of times they just bred people just so that they could try to create a greater product but what they would do is they would snatch the baby from the parent and this is what sin is like of course that was sin slavery is sin of course but this is what sin is like is that as soon as you were born, the enemy comes to take you. He says, listen, that child don't belong to you. That child belongs to me. That child belongs to me. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my hands. I'm going to put my influence. I'm going to poison their minds. I'm going to contaminate their understanding. I'm going to place my influence on them. I'm going to do everything I can because they are under my custody and my jurisdiction. I know you birthed them, but they are under my custody and my jurisdiction because as in the days of Noah, it's the game of power. Oh, can we have church? It's a game of power. It's a time of weighty demonic presence and what god is saying is that there were no other people in the earth who stood up for righteousness they knew the way but there was really only a family that stood up for righteousness and isn't so interesting is that what god wants to do is he wants to bring righteousness through the family this is why we have to fight for our family in america is why we can't let these wicked agendas determine what our families will look like and what a family is. Um, because God wants to use righteousness. He wants to use the family as the vehicle for righteousness. It was Noah's family, both his, him and his wife, his, their three sons, watch this, and their sons, three wives. So you have multiple, you have three levels. You've got the nuclear family. You've got the, man, the husband and wife. And then you've got their children. It's the second level. And then you've got the children and their spouses. It's family. God wants to use families. And this is why the enemy has got his hand in your family, in your household, trying to wreak havoc. And this is why we have to make wise decisions when it comes to our families, who we marry, our desire to stay married. Glory to God, our intention to do it the kingdom way, because it is through families that God wants to impact the world. Families are important. Kingdom families are important. I just thought I'd throw that in there. But we got to understand that that in the days of Noah, there were spirits that had to be dealt with. The impact and the influence of why they felt that way, why people were evil continually. Although, watch this, notice this, even though they were impacted by evil spirits, profoundly disgusting and powerful demonic spirits. God still didn't leave them culpable. This is not America where you can say the devil made me do it and you off Scott. 
and you can get a, you know, you can get a, you know, a cool bed, <laughs> you know, go to the psychiatric ward in prison. This is not that or even get let off. This is not that God still held men and women culpable. Matter of fact, he's held the, the, men, the humans culpable. He held the animals culpable. He held the birds culpable, which are animals. He held everybody culpable because watch this. God says no matter what is impacting you, you still have an understanding and to know that I'm God and there's nothing greater. Oh, let me give you this quick tip right here is that I don't care what you are dealing with right now in your life. I don't care how bad the sickness is. I don't care how deep the addiction may be. God is still greater. My God. And God says obedience to me is still greater. Matter of fact, you ought to tell him yes in your struggle. You ought to tell him yes in your sickness. You ought to tell him yes in your despair because God is greater and God still demands our yes. He still wants a yes. That's deep. In spite of what I'm going through, God still wants a yes. God will still hold me culpable, even though I'm dealing with all this stuff around me. God will still hold me responsible or accountable for the stuff that I'm dealing with. Let me hurry up. My God. Thank you, Jesus. And so because this is a, a days of battle of power, God had to put Moses, um, Noah on a mission as in the days of Noah, we're just breaking down what the days of Noah mean. We just think men are evil, but we're missing the fact that it was gross and massive spiritual warfare and presence. You say, how do you get that? Well, I read it to you. We literally read it in first Peter chapter three, verse number 18. It says, watch this it, or verse 18 through 20. It says it's for Christ also died for sins once for all the just for the unjust so that he might bring us to God having been put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. Verse 19, watch this. <laughs> in which also he went and made proclamation, watch, to the spirits now in prison who once were disobedient when the patience of God kept waiting, when? In the days of Noah, during the construction of the ark. <laughs> So watch this. So during that time of construction, at least 120 years, that whew, there was a global, or at least I would say global, arresting and handling of demonic spirits by Noah. Can I get good? Can we get this? Was this blessed me so much when I saw? I was like, oh, this is so good. Is that what Noah's mission was, wasn't just to build an ark. But the Bible says that Noah was a preacher of righteousness. He had a, a preacher of righteousness. He had a responsibility, one, of building the ark. But at the same time, while he was building the ark, he had the responsibility of preaching righteousness. And we can see that in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7. Where it says, by faith, Noah, being warned by God about things not yet seen, in reverence prepared an ark for the salvation of his household, by which he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness, which is according to faith. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. So watch this. So when Noah is doing his thing, and he's condemning the world. He's preaching. He, he's literally, he's literally preaching. He's literally, glory to God. I'm going to give you this one. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Come on. Let's go to 2 Peter chapter 2 and 5. Here's what it says. Watch this. Let's look at 2 and 4. It says, For if God did not spare angels when they sinned, but cast them into hell, and committed them to pits of darkness reserved for judgment and did not spare the ancient world, but preserve Noah, watch this, a preacher of righteousness with seven others when he brought a flood upon the world of the ungodly. Mm -hmm. Noah here in 2 Peter chapter 25, the Bible says that Noah was a preacher of righteousness. So Noah is building an ark, but he's also at the same time preaching. What is he preaching? 
Righteousness. What is righteousness? Right relationship with God. That's covenant talk. Let's let's go deeper, shall we? So Noah, watch this. So the question is this. Now, we have to combine 1 Peter 3 with 2 Peter. 1 Peter 3 says that, <laughs> that these spirits were in prison who once were disobedient. Watch this. The Bible gives us a time frame. When the days, I'm sorry, when the patience of God kept waiting in the days of Noah. So these spirits that Jesus went and preached to during while well, there's three days in the grave. Scripture is telling us that these spirits were had a time frame of their being cast into this eternal prison called hell. It was during I'm reading this straight from the Bible. It's during. <laughs> the days of Noah. During the construction of the ark. Why is this important? Because I'm trying to tell you that something significant happened. The Lord gave me this tremendous revelation. Something significant was happening when Noah was preaching righteousness. He wasn't just preaching, saying, you know, words out of his mouth saying, you going to hell, you need to get right. You need to get right. You ain't right. You ain't living right. That's how we tell people they need to get right, right? That's how we tell people they need to get right. That's how we evangelize. And we've done it so terribly wrong and offensive in the church. You're going to hell. You're crazy, which most people are crazy. Let's just be straight up. Like, you know, don't look at the person next to you, but people crazy, man. That's one thing I've realized. My God, people are crazy. But still, are we saying you're a mess? You ain't nothing. You're worthless. You're a piece of garbage. You're scum. And we wonder why nobody want to come <laughs> and receive your track to receive Jesus. Yeah, well, they don't sound like Jesus loved me. Scripture tells us with loving kindness have I drawn you. Another verse says in the book of Romans is that it's the goodness of God that leads men to repentance. So we've been doing it wrong because we've just been trying to tell people facts and information about their spiritual state. But this is not what Noah was doing because Noah, the Bible says he was condemning the world. But at the same time, when he was preaching righteousness, his righteous preaching did not just create people who were saying, you know what? That's a good preacher right there. Oh, you got to tune. You got to come here, my man of God, Noah. Boy, that man, he builds. He got a vision. He asked us to give him $25.50 a month so he could work on his project. The Lord gave him a building the ark. <laughs> come see my preacher. It wasn't that kind of preaching. Right? Oh, you got to. It wasn't these clips on Instagram and Facebook. You know what I'm saying? But what Noah was preaching was a kind of message that was a shadow or a type of the kingdom message. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Let's have church. The Bible is telling us that in Hebrews 11 and 7, it says that when Noah was condemning the world and building the ark, watch this. He became an heir of the righteousness, which is according to faith. And we know that this righteousness that's according to faith is this righteousness that comes by the gospel of the kingdom of God. Glory to God. It comes by the gospel. It is this good news that Jesus himself preached. And he told all his disciples to go into all the world and preach this gospel to all creation. So Noah is a type, glory to God, of Jesus Christ. And he is preaching a type of a kingdom message. Oh, we Glory to God. And as he's preaching this kingdom message, as he's preaching this kingdom message, watch this. He is not just he's he's failing on paper. Nobody is coming to his church on paper. Nobody is signing up to be partners in Noah Ministries International. <laughs> nobody signing up. Nobody wants to be with Noah on paper because nobody responded. Nobody took accountability. Nobody's heart was after God. Everybody was so blinded by the devil and, the, and became and being children of disobedience that they did not and would not and refused to say, yes, I need to be saved. I need to come into righteous relationship with God. Hallelujah. And nobody said yes. And the question is for my preachers out there, keep preaching. Because if nobody says yes, 
Glory to God. I'm not just preaching to you. I'm not just preaching to the crowd. I'm, I'm doing other kind of work and other kind of damage. This is why you can't be silent. This is why you cannot. You have to cry loud and spare not. This is why you have to lift your voice that no matter what, no matter who responds, no matter if it's one person or 10,000, because God has given you a responsibility to preach righteousness. And watch this. And when you preach righteousness, uh oh, my God, watch this. The demonic system has to respond and I'm telling you we're getting ready to come into a day and age where our preaching is not just about being can we get the best hoop can we get the best tune-up can we get the best uh the best phrases that make people say so good can we it's not gonna be about that anymore it's not gonna be about us trying to look cool trying to be communicators and where we're not preachers we're communicators we give speeches on Sunday but God is saying that he's looking for somebody that's gonna preach righteous that's gonna preach this kingdom message because because when you preach this kingdom message, the demons and the devils respond. Woo! Glory to God. Oh, you don't believe me, but let me tell you exactly what Jesus said. Hallelujah. He said this in Matthew. I'm sorry, in Luke. Glory to God. Uh, chapter nine. No, no, no. Matthew chapter 10. Watch this. Here's what he said. Let me go to this. because I got to show you this because this is so good. Here's what he said. Jesus summoned his 12 disciples. Watch this and gave them authority over every unclean spirit to cast them out and to heal every kind of disease and every kind of sickness. Let's jump down to verse number seven. And Jesus said, and as you go, preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, Cast out demons freely. You receive freely give. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Now, now jump to Luke chapter 10. I want to show you something. Glory to God. Jesus was so aware that your preaching is not just based off of who responds in the natural and the physical. Your preaching, your ministry is not just based off of how many people take the track and shake your hand and repeat a 20 second prayer with you. It's not just about that. You have a dual assignment. Yes, we want to see people saved. Yes, we want to see people coming into relationship and knowledge of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. But what we really want to see, what we really want to experience also is that we can see the heavens and the spiritual ranks of the devil responding and coming subject and being arrested and imprisoned by the words of righteousness. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Glory to God. Look at Luke chapter 10. Come on. Watch this. Verse number 17. The, the 70 returned with joy saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Oh, come on. Let's have church. Hallelujah. And he said to them, watch this. I was watching Satan fall from heaven like lightning. And he says, behold, I've given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing will injure you. He says, nevertheless, do not rejoice in this. Wait a minute. Not that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are recorded in heaven, we're going to need to send out yellow envelopes if you want to be in the faith. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He says, watch this. He, he's not even talking about the people who got converted. He's not talking about the how many people came to your church. How many people joined up and became disciples? He says, don't rejoice that the demons are subject to you. He says, rather rejoice that your name is written. Watch this. Hallelujah. In heaven. So in other words, Jesus is giving us clear fact and, and correlation to the fact that when you preach the kingdom of God, when you declare the righteous works of Jesus Christ, Christ, when you preach righteousness based on the kingdom of God, the demons and the spiritual powers and forces, they have to respond so much that Jesus says, behold, I was watching Satan fall like lightning from heaven. What do you mean? Is this a picture of what happened in the days of Noah? That as Noah was preaching, my God, he was preaching that Jesus, I'm sorry, that the world is soon to end. He was preaching that you need to get right with God. He was preaching that you need to come and submit Submit everything. You need to come and give your offering to God. Give your best to God. Honor God. As Noah was doing that, the Bible is letting us know that the demons began to fall from their spaces in the spiritual dimension in the heaven. And they got locked up in the Holy Ghost and they got assigned to hell because of the preaching of righteousness by Noah. 
Boy, y'all better say amen. My God, you better say amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Because watch this. We are, we are at a place. My God, I'm trying to tell you what God is trying to give you. Something, something. So that you can do something with the something that's bothering you. <laughs> God is trying to give you some, some, so you can do something with the something that's bothering you. In other words, is that God is trying to elevate the church. See, we've been trying to, we've been preaching emotion too long. We've been preaching foolishness too long. We've been preaching about your haters and your enemies too long. But God is saying, we got to get back to preaching righteousness, preaching this kingdom message, this kingdom gospel that Jesus gave us because it's only in the kingdom gospel and message. If nobody come to my church, we're going to change this city. If nobody responds to you on the streets praying for people, you're going to change your region because you are preaching righteousness. Hallelujah. And the devils become in prison because Jesus said, as in the days of Noah. Oh, I feel like having church. I need you to shout as in the days of Noah. This means that as the church begins to rise and preach, yeah, wickedness may still grow. Matter of fact, Jesus said that it's going to be in the end days like the wheat and the tear, how they both grow together. But at the same time, I'm telling you some devils are getting locked up. I'm talking about devils of depression has got to get locked up. Devils of gender dysphoria is getting locked up in Jesus name. Devils of suicide in the name of Jesus are getting locked up hallelujah right now in the name of Jesus glory to God devils of scarcity and poverty are getting locked up in Jesus name come on devils of rape and devils of sex trafficking and racism and hatred are getting locked up because we must preach this kingdom gospel I don't mean to be so hyped but I don't care Glory to God. I don't mean to scare y'all today, but I need you to feel me today because God is trying to raise up people as in the days of Noah. When we preach the kingdom of God, this means that there are demonic principalities and structures. Woo! Come on. That'll be locked up. Come on. Generational curses. It'll be locked up. Hallelujah. The reason why families can't stay together, it'll be locked up. That spirit of divorce and conflict in marriage, it'll be locked up. That spirit that was spoken about in Malachi, the the fourth chapter where the fathers and the children are apart. Come on, it'll be locked up because the preachers of righteousness are here. I need to encourage somebody, Maurice, if you're watching, you better preach, man. You better do what God called you. Whatever God called you, all the preachers, all the pastors, all the ministers watching, you better preach and you got a responsibility because God is not just looking at the numbers of people following you, but he's looking at what's being locked up. Glory to God. Yeah, come on. Drug addiction is being locked up. Hallelujah. Alcoholism is being locked up right now. In Jesus' mighty name, I'm declaring right now over the sound of my voice that if you're struggling with alcoholism if you're struggling with substance abuse right now we declare under the sound of my voice in the mighty name of Jesus that every ounce of chemical influence in your blood everything that's been ingrained in your brain every spiritual locking hallelujah and blockage and every spiritual demon and every devil that has been assigned to you to keep you bound is cast out in the mighty name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now we command it to go. We command the taste of alcohol. We command the taste and the desire for get it high to be removed and broken off of you in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Even medication prescription highs. Come on. Broken. And Shande. glory to God in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, I come to have church today. We talking about in the days of Noah. Glory to God. I'm still not at my finish yet. I'm just about there. Can you give me just a few more moments? So it's a lot I'm skipping through right now, but we just going to run on in it. Hallelujah. So hallelujah. So the purpose of the church. Woo, hallelujah. Ephesians chapter four, verse number eight says, when he ascended on high, Jesus, that is, he led captives captive. I love the King James Version says he led captivity captive, but he led captive a host of captives and he gave gifts to men. So when Jesus is proclaiming to these spirits, as first Peter three tells us, he's not just he's not preaching the gospel to them because that's a different word. The word preach there in the King James, it means proclamation. It doesn't mean the good news that we're preaching. He is making a statement 
statement, glory to God, that what Noah told you about in shadow is here now. And he says, and you people, you devils, you demons that have been disobedient to God, that have been wreaking havoc on God's people. He says, today I'm leading you captive. I'm leading you on a parade, glory to God, and up in the heavens to show all the devils, everything that is in the heaven on every layer spiritually. He says, I'm showing it to you so that you can know there's a new sheriff in town. Oh, you don't believe me. I need more verses. Here's what he says. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Therefore, when he ascended on high, he let captive a host of captives and he gave gifts to men. Now this expression, he ascended. What does it mean? Except that he who also had descended into the lower parts of the earth. Um, hallelujah. He who descended is he himself who also ascended far above all the heavens so that he might feel all things. So wait a minute. So Jesus is saying, I'm showing you this so you can know that I'm the top dog. He's saying this is an actual literal representation of what glory to God. Matthew 28 verse 20 means it says in this uh, 18 rather. And he says, and he says, and behold, hallelujah, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. And so when Jesus is making this parade of all these prisoners that that Noah, glory to God, in his early days of preaching righteousness, which was a shadow of the kingdom message, when Noah Noah was preaching that the Bible is telling us that Jesus grabbed these wicked disobedient spirits and he put them on parade and he says yes 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 I'm here now yes the king is here I hear my mind the champ is here hallelujah the champ is here and, 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 and Jesus has got this parade and he's going all through every layer of the heavens every layer of principality spiritual wickedness dark forces in heavenly places and he says I'm coming and I'm showing you this to show you that I have authority I have power I come on have conquered death and the grave I am that God and as a result I gotta hurry up as a result glory to God the Bible says not only did Jesus take his thrown on top of every demonic power that has placed itself and situated itself over the earth. But he also says, and he gave gifts to men. Oh, let's have church. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He gave gifts to men. Watch this. And he gave some as apostles and some as prophets and some as evangelists and some glory to God as pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of service to the building up of the body of Christ until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a mature man to the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ and I'm telling you right now church is that when God hallelujah caused this to happen he says not only am I sitting at the top of the throne but I'm putting these gifts in place to show you that every demonic level that is there I got a gift for it hallelujah for every demonic level that's in the spiritual places in the heavenlies he says I got a, a gift for it. He got an apostle to match a devil. He got a prophet to match a demon. He got glory to God, a pastor to match an imp. He got a, a, a teacher, hallelujah, to match a demon. Glory to God. And he's got uh, an evangelist to match a demon. So every level, Jesus gives gifts for the ministry and the operation of the church so that the church can have an, op an opposite function, hallelujah, of support that goes against the function of the demonic entity. This is why you can't do church by yourself. This is why you got to find you a good local church, glory to God, where you can gather and be fed and minister to because it's in the system that Jesus set up that it will secure you and it will guard you against all the attacks of the devil. You can't do this by yourself. You can't do this on your own, but you got to get to a place where you can recognize the system that Jesus set up. That's a bonus. Hallelujah. So, so, so we got to talk about judgment. Glory to God. I'm running out of time. We got to talk about judgment. Can I do this thing? How do we got talking about judgment? Because as in the days of Noah, we know that judgment occurred. God sent a flood in the earth. But here's the thing, family, that sometimes, according to scripture, it's not all cataclysmic. Oh, I got to grab this mic. I feel like preaching today. Hallelujah. It's not all cataclysmic. It's not all an end of the world kind of thing. There are many different, differing levels of judgment that God delivers in the earth. Hallelujah. Now, we know that there is going to be an ultimate judgment of the world. But my God, that sometimes God will release judgment in terms in spite of it and why does God release judgment God releases judgment in the earth watch this not because he's mad but because he's trying to make an escape for the righteous to rise up Woo! 
Glory to God. You got to hear what I'm telling you. Oh my God. God, hallelujah, does not just always bring judgment because he's a mean old angry God, but he uses judgment as a means, hallelujah, to be able to lift up the righteous out of the bonds and out of the, the snares of affliction and oppression by unrighteousness. God will use judgment so that the church, that his people, his covenant people can rise up. And you got to hear what I'm telling you. You can't always look negatively at judgment. You can say, oh, judgment, come and get like a sad face as we always do. Because judgment, because it starts in the house of God, yes. But judgment is so that God can weed out the unrighteous from the righteous. And so that he can be able to elevate and lift up the righteous. And this is where we going to have church today in Jesus' mighty name. Glory to God. Because the way that you can get to this place. Let me give you some examples real quick. Look at these different levels. Hallelujah. I'm going to skip something. Watch this. Jesus uses judgment, hallelujah, to illustrate on different levels. He talked about the judgment of Noah and his days, and that judgment was over the whole world. But you can skip forward in the book of Genesis, hallelujah, to, the, to, to when God was dealing with that city called Sodom, where Lot was in. And God used judgment, watch this, hallelujah, to, to, to destroy an entire city. He didn't destroy the world, but he destroyed a city with fire. Glory to God. And then you could jump to the book of Exodus and you can see how God used judgment hallelujah so that he could judge Egypt against for, for the sake of the people of God God used judgment by these massive plagues by these massive supernatural experiences that devastated that country and that actually attacked every false God of that nation God used judgment so that he could do what so that he could liberate the people of God and bring them into the promised land God used judgment and he was able to liberate Lot. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Because I got to tell you, church, in the days of Noah, the last thing that Jesus said was available was favor. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So you're going to have favor. Hallelujah. In the days of Noah. And God says, I'm releasing a special kind of favor, a special kind of grace over the people of God because I'm going to give you a way to escape. But when you escape out of the oppression, when you escape out of the affliction, when you escape out of the bondages and the struggles of the devil, when you escape out of your Egypt, children of Israel and Moses, when you escape out of your Sodom lot, when you escape out of the world Noah under your ark, God says, I'm going to give you a system. I'm going to give you an op a, mechan a mechanism. I'm going to give you a machine so you can get out so that not only can you can get out, but so that you can rise up and you can begin to do what God has called you to do because you're going to find out that when Noah found favor with God, Noah was introduced to a way to get out. And I'm telling you church you might be dealing with affliction of the enemy you might be dealing with some devils in your money you might be dealing with some devils in your body you might be dealing with some devils in your family you might be dealing with some devils in your mind you might be dealing with some devils on your job in your building on your block you might be dealing with some devils in culture some devils in city hall some devils in the New York City Department of Education you might be dealing with some devils all around you but but God says in the as in the days of Noah that Noah found favor with God. I'm going to prophesy to you and say that you're going to find favor with God. That God wants to introduce you into a new level of favor. God wants to introduce you into this new level of access. Somebody shout access. Access into God. And let me tell you what favor is church. Favor isn't just a parking spot. Favor is not just perks and bonuses but favor is access to God. Favor is getting close closer to God where you can see the works and the ways of God Moses told God in Exodus 33 he says since I have found favor in your sight he says teach me your ways so that I may find favor in your sight you say Pastor Bryson you just said the same thing twice no 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 Moses recognized that there's levels of favor Jesus said in Luke chapter 2 verse number 52 where it was spoken about Jesus that he grew both in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man so the principle here is that favor is dynamic that you grow in favor but favor with God 
It's not the same as favor with man. You don't need favor with man if you got favor with God because the favor with God is all you need, hallelujah, to get whatever you need. Moses didn't have favor with Pharaoh, but Moses was able to get the terms that he needed because he had favor with God. You don't need to have favor with your enemies. You don't necessarily need to have favor on your job because if you get favor with God, God says, I'll give you access into my secrets. Well, they're not going to be able to deny you. They're not going to be able to turn turn you down. They're not going to be able to turn your contract and your proposal down. They're not going to be able to overlook you anymore because I'm going to give you a technology that comes from the heart of man. My God, you got to recognize that Noah was working on something that nobody had seen before, nobody heard of before, that took him over 120 years to build because this idea of this ark, the structure, the size, the specifics of it came from the mind of God and the reason why Noah was able to get to it because Noah found favor with God and I want to prophesy to you in the season of your life as in the days of Noah favor is coming on your life that God is about to give you access not just access to things but access to his glory access to his mind access to kingdom technology that will deliver you out of the affliction of the enemy many I feel like preaching many are the afflictions of the righteous but God I heard you Nicole yesterday tell me but God but God but God delivers him out of them all because when you got favor with God when God grants you access he's gonna give you the technology he's gonna give you the wisdom to get out of it oh I know you're stuck in the lease I know you're stuck in a situation at your job where you feel like you can't get out but when God gives you favor hallelujah you coming out I need somebody to shout, Lord, give me favor. Come on, shout it like you mean it. Lord, give me favor. Give me favor. Oh, yeah. When you get this favor in your life, my God, I don't care what the doctors have told you, what prescriptions they said you're going to be on your whole life my God but you're going to get a favor with God that is going to cause you and put you in a position to where you're going to come out and come up glory to God you're going to get a kingdom technology you're going to get a kingdom breakthrough a kingdom solution so that you can be able to move and step into a new dimension that as these other systems go down because God's judgment is coming the people of God are rising up and I'm telling you you don't got to be afraid in the evil day you don't got to be afraid of the last days yeah you can be nervous but God is saying I'm placing an ark for my people of God an ark is that place of safety an ark is that place of security an ark is that salvation that God gives to you because you have trusted in him and because you have found favor Lot found favor because of his cousin Abraham glory to God hallelujah the children of Israel found favor with God and he was able to deliver them out of the hands of the oppressors of Egypt and you found favor favor with God when Jesus died on that cross he took your punishment he took God's wrath for you and he took it for you and he hung his head and he died and God delivered you the Bible says he grabbed you out of the domain of darkness and placed you into the kingdom of his beloved son somebody shout favor and so we're praying we're praying and prophesying in this season that God is going to release a new dimension of favor on your life new favor is coming to you and we're talking about access this month of August I'm telling you right now that God hallelujah is getting ready to release into your life a new dimension of favor of access to God places and moments where you've been hidden and the will of God has been separate from you you've not known it I'm telling you in this season favor is coming over your life Favor is being released. Favor is being released. Favor is being released. And we're declaring right now. Oh, Every devil, come on, that's over your household. That's been over your life, holding you hostage, holding you down, keeping you bound. We call it broken in the name of Jesus. Jesus gave the disciples authority over every devil, over every unclean spirit. And I'm telling you right now. Every devil in your life that's been harassing you is broken today in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, the kingdom is at hand. Oh, no longer shall it curse you. No longer shall it hinder your sleep. No longer shall it impact your mind. No longer shall it violate your relationships. 
Yeah. Every demonic instigator. Broken. In the name of Jesus. And I'm declaring that God is going to release access to him. That's what this favor is. Access to him. By faith. By faith. As in the days of Noah. <laughs> As in the days of Noah. We read in Genesis 6 and 8. But Noah found favor with the Lord. Who's that going to be today? Somebody's got to say, I'm tired of being stuck. I'm tired of being bound and limited. I'm tired of not having control. I'm tired of sleepless nights. I'm tired of being in the same state. I'm tired of these needles and these doctors poking and prying me all the time. I'm tired of it. I want you to lift your hands right now and just say, Lord, I want to have greater favor with you. Grant me favor in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, grant me favor. Your broke days are over. Come on, say, Lord, grant me favor. Show me your ways. Show me your mind. Some of you are stuck on knowing what I should do next. I'm telling you, in this season, if you will seek for it, as God is releasing a grace for access, come on. You're going to find it. You're going to hear it. The Lord is going to speak to you. But the Bible says Noah found favor with God. He found favor with God. When you walk with God, it will put you on the pathway of favor. When you walk in righteousness, when you walk in obedience with God, delightfully, willingly. The Bible says if you're a willing and obedient, Deuteronomy, leave the good of the land. Well, oh, that's Isaiah, excuse me. If you're willing and obedient, we want to be willing and obedient in our walk with God, not reluctant. We want to delight ourselves in the Lord. That will grant you favor. When you operate by faith and you do what you know to do, that will open up the realms of favor in your life. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you what I just seen, even right now. Come on, in this season, I hear the Lord saying, even I hope he's here. Brother Maurice, I just seen the Lord just release a disbursement of a tremendous grant. A grant is coming your way in the mighty name of Jesus. He says, but as you seek my favor, as you seek access to me, God says Re resources. I'm going to send resources. He says, I'm sending a grant to you. Hallelujah. I just seen this big ball. It was like a bag of money, like a garbage bag of money. And it's a grant. <laughs> Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hmm. Worship him. Begin to worship him. Begin to worship him. Listen, if you're watching today and you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life, <laughs> I don't know if you caught the beginning part of this message, but if you're not in the faith, <laughs> if you're not a born again believer, you need to get saved today. You need to come under into obedience to God, the laws of God, God's system. Oh man. And just give your life, just surrender your life to Jesus right now. We used to sing a song in the old church, come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus just now. Just now. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Yep. Just now. Now we're doing it. He can 
Savior. Maybe you're watching and you're not walking in right relationship with God. You say, I've already done the same thing. Lost and left to die. Oh, raise your head for love is passing by. Mm -hmm. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. <laughs> Come to Jesus. And live. Hallelujah. Let me stop that. I thought it was a different record. But come to Jesus. Come to Jesus just now. I want to encourage you to trust him with your life. You don't have to worry about being perfect in this relationship with God. Just know that as you surrender your life fully to God, to Jesus, that he will perfectly put you in it. He will perfectly put you in it. Where you won't have to worry about making mistakes. If you fall, we have an advocate with the Father. And he's able to wash away our sins and give us forgiveness of sins. Hmm. I'm declaring to you right now, that today is your day of breakthrough. Today is your day of salvation. All you got to do is just repeat this prayer with me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I need you. I need you. I need you. I need you. I need you to save me. I need you to save me. I need relationship with you. I need to be in covenant relationship with you. And so I receive the life of Jesus, his death, on the cross for me I receive it right now I surrender everything to you I lay everything down for you on the cross right now at your cross at the foot of the cross right now I lay it down I give you my life the good the bad the ugly things I'm proud of things I'm ashamed of my past my present and my future I lay it over to you my body my soul and spirit I surrender it to you in this moment Wash me with your blood. Cleanse me with your word. Make me your son or your daughter. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Listen, if you prayed that prayer, you meant from your heart. You believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins and that God raised him from the dead. Scripture says that you will be saved. I want to welcome you to the family of Christ today. Glory to God. If you're backslidden, if you've not been walking with God as you ought to, today is your day. You can get back right with God too. Here's what I want you to do right now. I want you to, in whatever platform you're watching on right now, I want you to comment or send me an inbox. Send us an inbox, whatever you're watching on. Send us a message or put it in the comments. Hashtag Jesus. And we're going to do is we're going to, and then I want you to inbox us your contact information. And we're going to follow up with you. And we're going to get in touch with you, myself and my team. And we're going to give you everything we can to help you walk this journey as a newborn again believer amen hashtag jesus along with your contact information glory to god is your all on the altar of sacrifice slay come on your heart does the spirit control? Hallelujah. Oh, 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 you can own. Thank you, Jesus. They be blessed. Hallelujah. And have peace and sweet rest. Thank you, Jesus. As you hear him, your body and soul. Listen, if you don't have a church home, let me give you this one. To those of you who are watching today and you feel like God is leading you to this church, you feel like you need to be a part of this movement, let me tell you something. If you don't have a church home, listen, we, I want to be your pastor. 
I want to I want I want you to be a part of our fellowship. Amen. God is doing something very special in this church and he's given us a movement not just to have church but to empower people to follow God and live as kings. Not just so that you can get your walk with Christ right, but so that you can begin to get your Christ life like Christ life right. We want to help you walk in the fullness of everything God has called you to do. My nickname is the Pusher Man. I don't sell drugs, but I help push people into what God has called them to do. That's what our church is set up to do. Amen. And we're doing something very special, and God has got a unique anointing and assignment for our church. And we'd love to have you be a part of that. So if that's you today, listen, I want you to inbox us on whatever platform you're watching. And I want you to inbox us the word hashtag church. Hashtag church. If you feel like God is leading you, you want to know more about Next Level Church, how you can be a part and get connected to this great body of believers. We're not all perfect, but we perfect in it. You understand what I'm telling you? Hey Amen. We're on a mission. We're going to impact this city in a big way. And, and we definitely could use your help to do that and help bless your life in the process. Hashtag church with your contact information. Myself and my team will be in touch with you. And we'll tell you more about Next Level Church, what it means to be a member here at Next Level Church and all that. All right. Bless God. We went a little bit over today because I felt like preaching. Don't be mad at me. Don't be mad at me. I feel like preaching today. We just came off this three day fast. Amen. And I'm just like, ooh, I'm ready to start something, man. And we got so many people dealing with stuff. I'm just like over it. But listen, we're going to prepare to receive our offering today. Listen, you give you a chance to give and to sow. Amen. I want you to do that today, right now. If the word and bless you, if the word bless you today, or if you're giving um, your seed offering, or if you're giving tithing offering, whatever it is today, information is here for you to give and for you to sow and to be a blessing and to participate at this church we believe in tithing we believe in giving offering we don't do gimmicks we don't do games but we do it to honor god we tithe because we're honoring god the bible says honor him with the first of your wealth and all of your produce and the first of your produce and god says he'll make your vineyards be filled overflow and your barns will uh overflow right proverbs 3 8 and 9 and so we believe that honoring God is key. And so we honor God with the tithe here. I want to challenge you and encourage you to tithe today, not as a curse, but as a way to honor God. Just say, God, I love you. I recognize you as first and foremost in my life. That's what the tithe represents. Amen. Amen. The information is on the screen for you to do that, or you can give offering, or you can just be a blessing and sow a seed. Listen, I want to help. I want to encourage you to do that today because your support will help us continue to reach the gospel. You know, we've reached thousands of people this week with the gospel of the kingdom. And it's because of your support. And we're getting inboxes and emails and text messages from people. And they're saying, pray for us, help us in this. And so, you know, we're praying for people. We're building relationships with people all across the city and even beyond. And your giving helps us do that. And we're going to do it even more. And so your giving helps us do that. And it's a blessing. We're doing something that is different, that is really, uh, you know, novel in this region. And, and really in the church world like this. And so your support helps us do that. Amen. Your obedience to God helps us to continue to do that. All right. So I want to encourage you. Let's give. I want to challenge you to give today. Amen. By faith today, ask the Lord, what shall I render to you, Lord? Amen. As we do that, let's pray. Information again, the information is on the screen. You can scan the QR code or do whatever. But I want to encourage you to take part today. Let's sow for access. Let's sow for greater favor. Let's believe God for that. And we're placing a, a, a faith on that. Amen. Glory to God. We love you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. Hallelujah. All right, let's pray. Father, lift your seat up, lift your offering up. Father, we thank you right now in Jesus' name. Thank you for the ability to give your words. Says, you give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. And so we thank you that this is your word, your system, Lord. And so we walk in it today. As we give our offering today, we're entering into covenant promises where you said you'd open the windows of heaven for our blessing. We don't have room enough to receive. And you would cause our nations to call us blessed. And that you would rebuke the devil, the devourer for our sake. And so we receive that today. And Lord, we also receive the blessing where you said if, you, if we would give, it would be given back to us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over men and women and people were given to our bosoms. So we enter into that grace today as we give, as we sow today. Glory to God. And Lord, we thank you that you're doing it. We thank you, Lord, that even the grace is on us today as we give. Your word says that the grace was on Jesus, that he was rich in heaven. He became poor in the earth so that we through his poverty might become rich, abundant, wealthy, prosperous. We thank you for that grace that we enter into as we are diligent in this covenant of giving. This covenant practice of giving. 
sowing, tithing. We thank you, Lord, according to 2 Corinthians 9, 8. Your word says and you're able to make all grace abound to us so that it's always having sufficiency in everything. We may have an abundance for every good work. And so we receive that grace today as we give. We thank you for it. We give you praise. We give this cheerfully and joyfully, not under compulsion, but knowing that it is you who supply for us according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Listen again. Thank you so much for your giving and support. We appreciate it. I'm telling you, it's going to help us reach so many people with the gospel of the kingdom uh, in these coming days. And I appreciate it so much. Amen. Let me give you some quick announcements before we get out of here. Amen. And we jumping on after party. Hallelujah. Word announcements at y'all somewhere. I hope these are the right ones. Oh, yeah. Listen, tomorrow at 7, we got prayer ministry. All right, so join in for that. That's on our Zoom platform, only on our Zoom platform. So if you're interested in that, our prayer ministry meeting, uh, that's tomorrow at 7 p.m. on our Zoom platform only. So come through for that. And then also Mondays at 8.30 p.m., we have King School. And so that's something that we do. It's on every platform, all social media platforms, and on our Zoom platform. So come check that out. It's just an opportunity where we teach deeper kingdom principles on self-help personal development it's rather cool and interesting it's not really preaching so it's like talking it's great and then of course on wednesdays we do our weekly fast so join us in that again as we're fasting to unveil and for god to reveal more of this rev revelation regarding access that he has for us this month so we're fasting i want you to be a part of that with us it ain't gonna hurt you it's gonna be good for you actually um so we're fasting on Wednesday, we're praying, and then we also have our 12 p.m. prayer service that, is, um, that we do Wednesday at noon. And of course, we have our gathering Sundays at 10 a.m. and on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Whatever platform you're watching now, that's how you can join and lock in on Sunday and Wednesday. All right, listen, let's pray. Let's get you out of here in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for these, your people today. Thank you for this, your word today. Thank you for meeting us, my God. What a strong word today. Glory to God. We thank you that you are blessing us and that as in the days of Noah, you're giving us insight. You're giving us favor. You're giving us what we need so that we can come up and that we can survive and thrive in the midst of judgment, in the midst of you doing what you're doing as you are eliminating and you're locking up spiritual forces and wickednesses. Wickedness. We thank you. And so, Father, I bless these, your people. May this word dwell richly in their heart. May it be something that they can glean from. It'd be something that gives life to them. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless you. I love you to our first time friends. I love you. Thank you for being with us today. Listen, come back next week. I'm telling you, it gets gooder and gooder and gooder and gooder. Amen. And we love to have you with us. All right. God bless you. Listen, we're going to be on Zoom. If you want to talk about today's service, your takeaways, all that, I want you to come join us. The information is on whatever you're watching. There's a description or comment section and you'll see the information for you to join and join us on Zoom. We give a chance for you to come share what you got from the day's message, your takeaways, and just to testify. We love to hear from you. We love to have you. And that is happening right and now. I love you. Have a great day. See you soon. Come.